Hello everybody, welcome back to Day to Day Chess, this is Sabina and for today I've decided to go back to the 5th World Chess Champion and show one of his miniatures. Since this week we already started with a miniature, I thought it would be cool to continue with some very gorgeous miniatures. Um, so the game for today is between Max Oeve and Siegfried Bernard van Mindeno, played in Holland in 1927. Enough speaking, let's just get to business. We have the Italian here, bishop c5, c3. c3 is a very typical move in the um, Italian because white, of course, gets ready to play d4, bring a second pawn in the center with tempo, given that this bishop is in c5, and for black it's not as easy to play d5 because with the knight in um, c6 there's nobody to help push the d5. So, uh, Black here either moves the bishop so that d4 doesn't come with tempo or develops the knight in f6 to put pressure on e4. Um, so we have seen some games like this before. d4, a white counterattacks the center. d3 is another possibility. This would be the gioco piano where white plays slowly, as the word says in Italian. He's just going to finish... Uh, his development, castling, rook e1, bringing the knight d2, f1, g3. Later, he's going to prepare some d4, but he's not in a hurry. He's just going slowly. Um, so d4 was Max Oeve's choice. e takes d4, of course. Don't even think of playing a move like bishop d6. This is just positionally such a bad move. Not only do you move the bishop the second time, but... Uh, you will also have to move it a third time because just to defend this pawn you're retreating and by retreating you are staying in front of the d pawn not allowing this push and that bishop in c8 is going to be, to be stuck for quite some time there. So don't even think of moves like this. Nobody's going to take an e5 to help you. They are of course going to finish their development and you will eventually have to um, to deal with moving the bishop once again. So we don't want that. Um, black here, when there's um, this double attack happening, it is taking d4. c takes d4, bishop b4, check, knight c3. So far so good. And we actually not long ago have seen a game here between Steinitz and Kurt von Bardeleben. So if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend you to. Uh, Black played d5 in that game, and you might want to see how um, Steinitz exploited Black's king in the center. Uh, in this game, however, Siegfried Bernard went for knight takes e4, just directly capturing the pawn. He's still remaining with the king in the center, but it's not as bad as before. He's going to be able to, tra to trade one of these pieces and then castle, if he wants to. So white castled to get out of this pin and, of course, have a little threat. Bishop takes c3. Uh, some other possibilities, actually, in, in this position and another one that could be playable is knight takes c3. Because now after pawn takes, you can think of bishop takes and not be too afraid of bishop takes f7 because king takes. And if queen b3, of course... Um, black is going to play d5, you're going to capture the bishop back, but still you have a pawn down, and um, yes, my king is in the center, but maybe I'll have some time to um, get it protected. But of course there are some other choices here for white. White's main idea is not um, necessarily to make sacrifices, but rather to develop with tempo or um, by keeping you from castling. So bishop a3 actually in this position would be a better choice for white, just to stop you from castling and um, make moves with tempo. Later I could have that idea if I wanted to, but why would I? This bishop in c3 is going to be a nice target for me, so no need to worry. That's why in that position, uh, normally uh, it's a line that's being played by black, and uh, they normally capture in c3 with the bishop. They give away the bishop, but with the idea that afterwards they are going to be able to castle. So if, if for example, you would just take b takes c3, black would play d5 intermediate move with tempo, followed by castle, finish his development, 
he has for the moment a pawn up and is going to take you some time to actually show something, some compensation for it. So that is the reason why after bishop takes c3, Max Oeve made a nice intermediate move, d5. The idea is I'm keeping both of your pieces attacked. Yes, I have a piece down for the moment, but I'm going to get one of them. Of course, the next move you can get them both um, off the attack. And um, here maybe a better choice for black would be some knight e5 possibly um, to not give the knight away, but very often um, people go back bishop f6. And now the line goes this way. Rook e1, putting pressure. Um, castle, immediately. Black castles. Um, he's giving the piece back. And um, rook takes e4. Now, of course, it's very important to note that castle is not the best solution maybe for black. Most of the games here in this position go this way, knight e7. So we still give this knight in e4, but we want to not allow this bishop in c4 to get opened and have some pressure in f7. So that's why sometimes they play knight e7, let you capture the knight, because you should get your piece back, and now black plays d6 to stop any kind of advancement of the d-pawn by white. And now if white thinks of bishop g5, we are, of course, happy with the trade because black doesn't have that much space, so any piece that he gets traded is very good for him. And now h6. This is a nice way um, of continuation for black. And now if you're thinking, ooh, I want to continue attacking because you've got the king in the center, you've got the weakness in f7, what if I'm thinking to play queen h5? And you could be thinking that, but, but you don't have the bishop. Like, the bishop is in c4, is not to d3 for the moment, you can bring it, but it's going to take some time to move the rook as well. So now I can simply castle with black, and um, then my knight can come to g6, the bishop can, of course, get developed in f5, maybe the bishop will get to g6. And black's position seems to be quite alright. So either one, after rook e1, knight e7 or castle are playable, maybe knight e7 is a better choice for black. After castle, uh, white went rook takes e4, of course, and here knight e7. So there are some similarities between this position and the previous one, but the problem here is black has not played d6, which means what is white allowed to do? White is allowed and, of course, will play this amazing move, d6. This is a very typical idea. Um, for white, for black, sometimes when you have a pawn and you can just push it uh, to the sixth rank, you attack a piece and then you force the opponent to get their pawns doubled to, to take that pawn back. Um, this is so amazing because now with these two doubled pawns, of course, I'm going to win one of them, but then your bishop in c8 is going to be closed for quite some time. And I can also, by taking d6, I'm bringing another piece closer to attack. The queen from d1, normally, let's just say that pawn was in d6 already, it's not very easy to bring it to attack, but like this, white's, pl uh, white's plan gets simplified a little bit, bringing his queen to um, d6, then we can have some bishop g5 ideas or knight g5 ideas. Um, the queen keeps the knight in e7 at under attack, so, um, you know, moves like getting the queen out, I don't know, maybe b6 or something. I'm not going to be, to be that great. I can play maybe bishop f4. And, uh, you know, the trading the queens is not going to help black. I mean, it's going to help him in a way to get rid of material, but after bishop takes d6, you're going to have big troubles with your knight in e7 and with this pin. You're either going to lose the knight or you're going to give away in exchange. So black cannot really... Um, get his queen out. He has to stay there, uh, otherwise there will be some rook e7, and uh, giving the rook for two pieces, that would be great for white. So uh, this position is uh, slightly, slightly better for white, in my opinion. This d6 is really good, that's why it's so important earlier, to, if we have the opportunity with black to play d6, to play it. Okay, so in this position, uh, black, I think, made a move that's not that great knight f5. Uh, of course, black wants to get away with the knight from e7 to be able to take the queen out, but, you know, you look at this position. 
and your black, let's say, and you realize that your bishop in c8 is having some trouble getting developed because now with this queen in d6 so powerful, stopping the d pawn from moving is going to be tough to move to 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 develop that bishop. And you can think of b6 moves, but it's too slow. B6 would be too slow because white is, can simply try to uh, to develop a tempo and start the attack on the king side. That's why we have to find a move with tempo. And in this position, b5 seems very interesting to me because I'm giving away the pawn up that I have. I giving I'm giving it away to um, make the bishop from c4 go away from this diagonal, which is going to be annoying, especially the f7 square. And now I can develop my bishop in b7 with tempo. Your rook will go somewhere. It's not clear which place is best. I would say probably g4. And now we can play queen b6. Now it's a completely different story. I mean, if you trade the queens, great. I traded the queens. Uh, I have an endgame. I'm not maybe not that great with this pawn in d7, but, you know, I have a nice endgame and you still haven't developed. So now we're not talking about black not being developed, but we're talking about white who, who had an advance in development. So this b5 uh, would have been a really nice move by uh, by black. So, of course, um, probably Oeve maybe wouldn't have taken him in, in uh, b5. Maybe he would have just gone back, bishop b3. But then again, the same thing could have happened, so it's not very clear how White could uh, maintain his advantage. Um, so, you know, it, it happens like that. You have some good moves, you think you're you're much better, and then your opponent can find some of these tactical ideas to get out of the, the terrible positional um, position that they have, you know. So you really need to, to look for, for tactical tricks in a game as well especially when you feel that you have a terrible positional um, position. <laughs> so uh, try um, try to look for those type of tricks. Okay, after knight f5, taking the queen, queen d5, of course, very good move by Oeve. Um, and now, you know, I'm, I'm pinning that pawn. You can't push the b4 pawn anymore. And um, maybe knight e7 could have been played if you want to try to repeat the position. Um, but um, Siegfried Bernard didn't do this, so he tried to finish his development. He has a pawn up, so why would he try to make a draw, right? And uh, here, Oeve continued the attack, and he played this very beautiful bishop g5. And in this position, his opponent just uh, saw a bishop in g5 and thought, Max Oeve doesn't know what he's doing, he's just giving away a bishop for free. So um, he took it, and of course it was a big blunder. Instead of that, moves like rook b8 to try to, to push the pawn and develop the bishop would have been more natural, because although white is really nicely placed, he has the bishop, the queen, putting pressure in f7, um, the bishop in g5, ready to get some things traded, this rook in e4, getting ready at some point to go to g4 maybe, but um, that's it. If if he doesn't manage to open up more um, Black's king, then Black is totally okay. He's going to play b6, bishop, b7, and start regrouping. So um, Max Oeve was lucky here that Black captured in g5, and now tried to pause the video and find the last moves of um, this game. The continuation here by Max Oeve was, of course, knight takes g5 bringing another attack to f7, and when black captured in g5, what happened? A very beautiful mate in two, queen takes f7 check, and when you take, his opponent resigned, but of course if you take an f7, there's just rook e8 mate. So this was the little miniature of Max Ewe. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you continue staying tuned for more miniatures coming up this week. Have a great day and stay tuned for more. Bye.